Jury selection is underway of the criminal, quote, hush money trial against former President Donald Trump. Trump is charged with falsifying business records in an effort to hide an alleged sexual encounter with adult film star Stormy Daniels. He has denied all charges. Trump spoke briefly before court, calling the case a, an assault on America. For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News legal contributor and Loyola Law School professor Jessica Levinson. Jessica, we are about to begin, or they're about to begin in this trial, uh, jury selection. Can you talk to us about what both sides are looking for in terms of seating an impartial jury? And great to have you. <laughs> It's such a good question because we know that old saying that cases are rarely won at jury selection, but they sometimes are lost at jury selection. And so I think, frankly, what both sides are looking for is something called a stealth or holdout juror. And the prosecution obviously doesn't want that juror. It's somebody who's maybe not being particularly forthcoming or maybe is just predisposed to be more open to the defense's arguments than the prosecution might want. But either way, they're the type of juror who said, I will stand my ground, even if I'm the only one, even if 11 of my colleagues are screaming, he's guilty, mm. I will say, no, I will not vote to convict. And that's the key for the defense here. So the prosecution obviously is looking to make their case to 12 jurors who they hope they can get a unanimous verdict of proof beyond a reasonable doubt for the defense. This is easier. They just need that one holdout, as we were talking about. And that's why I think jury selection could take a couple of days up to a week yeah. to try and see how the lawyers will use their challenges for cause and their peremptory challenges to seat this jury. Jessica, I think there is a there is. I guess I have questions about, you know, how you find an impartial jury. Of course, it's the former president of the United States who is running uh, again. So most of the stories and, and, and details of these cases, people have heard about them. What is it that you can ask and what can't you ask a juror in trying to establish that impartiality? So I will say our system hinges on the fact that we can get an impartial jury. And it's important to remember, as you know, that this is not about finding people who don't have a view of the president or who don't have a view of politics or who have never heard of this case. It's about finding people who can put their preconceived biases and views aside and say, let me look at the facts presented to me. Let me look at the jury instructions and make the decision just based on that. So there are 42 questions that the potential jurors are going to have to answer. And they don't have to answer who they voted for, but it will be things like where they get their news. It will be whether or not they've ever been to a Trump rally before. And so this is the prosecution and the defense's way of trying to figure out, one, are these people who can be fair? And then two, are they people that both sides can agree on? Hmm. That sounds tough. Uh, Jessica, tell me something. Unlike the civil trial, Trump has to be present four out of five days of the week in this case. How does that play into the outcome? Well, this is very different from the civil trial because there is a jury period. So it's not yeah. just that Trump has to be present, it's that a jury has to be present. And so the former president is very aware of visuals. He is uh, seen and known as a showman. And so I think that this will be really a interesting moment to see how he conducts himself in a courtroom when he is subject to a gag order and when the jury, you absolutely can believe, will be watching him. And so we have to look to see if the judge at a certain point reprimands him for facial expressions, for gestures, even for speaking out of turn. So it certainly changes the dynamic anytime he is in the room, but particularly when he's in the room as a criminal defendant. Jessica Levinson, thank you so much for that analysis. Thank you.